Okay. Uh, as always, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I'm putting out a new Python 3 video every Wednesday for the... Currently, that might change in the future. Um, I actually already recorded this tutorial, but I messed up when I was setting the file name to save to, and I lost the file. So I'm recording it again. Uh, I already have the script written out, so instead of retyping it all, I'm just going to show it to you and explain it. I apologize. Um, but I only have so much time to make these videos. Uh, so last week we were looking at um, if then statements, if then else, uh, and today we're going to throw that stuff into a script and ask the user to guess a number. So I'm going to call this, uh, once again I'm using Vim as my text editor, use whatever text editor you prefer, that's a personal preference. I'm calling my script uh, guess dot py and of course we do not want to forget our shebang line not required but still pretty important and if you're going to be a good programmer you want to do things the proper way you want that at the top it's just telling the operating system what uh, interpreter to use uh, the environment to use in this case it's Python 3 without that it might run uh, with Python 2 if that's the default on the system uh, and lots of other reasons I explained in previous tutorials why you should have this. Uh, very important. Okay, so the first part of our script, we're going to create two variables, x and g. x is the number that the computer is picking. Really, we're setting it. In the future tutorial, we might uh, redo this code uh, with a random number. Uh, but the whole point of this script is to have the user pick a number between 1 and 10. So here we are saying the number that they need to guess is 8. But you can make that whatever you want. As long as the number between 1 and 10, otherwise the script wouldn't make any sense. Then we're going to create a variable called uh, that we're going to call g, which is the guess. Uh, of course, you can call it something else. You can call it guess if you'd like. And I'm saying that to zero. The important thing in this particular code is to not make it whatever x is. Uh, so as long as we're not setting it to 8, we're good. But again, then again, in the future, if we do redo this tutorial or add to it where we make x a random number between 1 and 10, uh, you definitely want to make sure that it doesn't fall in this number. So it's good to pick a number that is outside the range between 1 and 10. So that's why I pick 0. But you could pick 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, anything above 10. Or you can pick negative numbers if you'd like, as long as it's not between 1 and 10. And in this particular case, especially if it's not whatever you set x equal to. So we have the variable set. And then when they run the script, when the user runs the script, the first thing you're going to see is this printed to the screen. It's going to say, pick a number between 1 and 10. And then we start our while loop. See, we, we've been working uh, the last week with if-then statements. And the week before that, the two weeks before that, um, we were working with while loops. Well, today we're combining them because an if statement, once it runs, whether you either put in the correct answer or not, it would just continue on with the script or, in this case, end because there's nothing past it. Well, we don't. We want In this case, we want the program, the script, to continually, continuously ask the user for, to take a guess until g equals what x is. So we're going to do all of this as long as g does not equal x. Okay? So here we're going to get the user input. And so we're saying, and we're going to put the value of the user input into g. So, if you watch previous tutorials, if we just did this, input guess a number, we would get an error. Because down here we're seeing, does g equal x? Is g less than x? And since x is an integer, we need this to be an integer. Or I guess a float would probably work in this case. Well, I, yeah, it should work. But it's important that we make it one or the other, but at least an integer, which is what we're looking for. So that's why we're getting the user input, which generates a string, but we're converting it to an integer with this outer uh, function, which we've gone over in previous tutorials. So hopefully you've watched the previous tutorials. So now that we've got, we've asked the user to guess a number, and we took their guess, made it an integer, put it into the variable g, now we need to start checking uh, g against x. So we're going to check does g equal 
x. Now, the reason we have equal equals here is because one equal sign in Python and many other languages would be setting g equal to x. So if we only had one equal sign there, we would get an error here because we'd be saying if, and then at the same time we're setting g equal to x, which would always be true if the f function let it go through. So here we're not setting a value, we're checking the value. Does g equal what x does? Did the person guess eight? If they did, print to the screen, got it. And at that point, the while loop would end as well because g will now equal x. And we're only doing this loop as long as g does not equal x, okay? So if they guessed it right, we say you got it. Then we're going to say elif. Elif is just saying, well, we're checking this. But if that's not true, then we're going to check this. Is g less than x? If g is less than x, we're going to say nope and then give them a hint, it's a higher number, or it's higher than that, okay? Now, this last part could be written two different ways in this particular scenario. Um, I could write it like this. I could say if, or elif, g is greater than x, and then we can say if g is greater than x, well, then we're going to print, nope, it's lower than that, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, this would work like this, and, and that's fine to do it that way. I'm a little uncomfortable. When I do if-then statements, I always like to have an else. Even though in this particular case, there's only three options. Their guess can only be the number you're looking for, or it's going to be greater than or less than. There's no other option um, other than if they were to put something that's not a number in there. But if the user does what they're supposed to, we should get one of those three. So although it would be all right to do if else g is greater than x, I, just in my mind, it's uncomfortable to have an if statement without an else, you know? Um, well, let's run this. Let's save this. And we'll run it. We'll make it executable. Once again, you only have to do this once. And that is on pretty much every operating system, scripts have to have permission to run other than the Windows operating system where you can just run the script. And this is a security thing, but once it's on the system and once you make it executable, you only have to do that once, even if you make changes to the code later on. So we're going to say dot slash uh, guess dot py, and the dot slash is just saying it's an executable in this folder. Dot slash means this folder. Uh, if you were to have this installed to a path that you keep your executables in, example, your bin path or your USR bin path, uh, then you wouldn't need the dot slash. You just try type guess.py. Anyway, we'll hit enter there. It says, pick a number between 1 and 10. Take a guess. And I will say 5, and we'll say, nope, it's higher than that. So I'll say 6. It goes, nope, it's higher than that. I'll say 9. It says, nope, it's lower than that. So I'll say 7. And we'll say, nope, it's higher than that. And then finally, when I guess 8, it says, you got it. So going back into our code, uh, just to show you, even though we've already talked about it and we went over this in a previous tutorial, if I was to get rid of that integer function there and just get the user input, run the code here and say 5, I'm going to get an error because 5 in this case is a string, not an integer. So we definitely want to have our integer function here to convert our string to an integer. Again, that's reviewing. Hopefully you watched previous tutorials. So again, I can say five and now it's working. But w writing code is not that hard. As you can see, it's relatively simple. I find the two hardest things when it comes to programming is, well, actually, the, the hardest thing when it comes to programming is packaging it for distribution. Uh, Linux systems uh, definitely make that easier because they have package managers. They can pull down dependencies for you so you don't have to worry about all those dependencies. You can just make a deb or an RPM file. But you could also be designing, you know, packaging this up for other operating systems where you would have to package all the the... the the, the necessary libraries and whatnot, rather than having the operating system handle that for you. Um, so that is, I think, the number one hardest thing when it comes to programming is actual distribution. 
uh, when it goes, comes from packaging it for other operating systems. Writing the code for multiple operating systems is simple. You just write it right. You write it correctly, and it should run on pretty much all operating systems. Now, the next hardest thing that we have, in my opinion, when it comes to programming is user error, I guess. Because <laughs> here's a simple code. It says, pick a number between 1 and 10. You know, and if they put 15, not a big deal. It says it's lower than that. Um, they're just guessing way out of range. But even though it's telling the user to put a number between 1 and 10, there will be a user out there that will type F, and then you're going to get an error. So the second hardest thing, I think, is just, you know, trying to predict what the end user is going to do. And, I mean, you could have tutorials, tutorials, tutorials on that. Luckily, there's a lot of modules that handle a lot of... Uh, things like that for you. But I just want to show that we're not going to go over uh, all that in this tutorial, but I just want you to always be conscious of, you know, you write a program and the program works. There's really nothing wrong with the program except for the end user might try to use it in a way that you did not intend. And it will happen if a lot of people are using your program and then they'll write a, a, a bug for it. And, and that's fine because, you know, on the other side of it, as a programmer, you should try to predict those things, and you, your code should have error detection in it. I'm very bad about putting error detection in most of my code, but most of my code I write for myself. But, uh, but this is just a very simple example of you tell the user to do something, and they decide they're going to do something else, or they just think of what you're asking them in a different way than you, you would have ever thought, and it causes your program to crash. So here... We're looking for an integer, you know. Another way to do that would be to get the string from the user, I guess, and then check if it's an integer, you know, check if it can convert to an integer. And if it can't, ask them again, give them a message. Again, we're not going to get into exactly how to do that in this tutorial, but I wanted to bring that up because I just thought this was a very simple example of that. Anyway, again, this tutorial is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen that will bring you to the full playlist. Currently, I'm putting out a new video every Wednesday, so if you're watching these as I'm putting them out, uh, hope that you come around next Wednesday. Uh, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. I also have other tutorials on Mondays and Fridays on other topics. And um, be sure to like this video so that I know you guys are liking these Python 3 tutorials. I know that you guys voted for them, but if you want to see them keep on coming, uh, continue to like them, and I'll continue to do them for a while. Uh, eventually, we'll get on to other topics because there's so much out there to learn. But for the time being, I see a lot of Python videos come up. Keep on liking these videos. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. You can search through my videos there. And I hope that you have a great day.